In a North Sudan village, a growing number of traditional miners working at gold-bearing rocks are disposing mining waste laden with highly toxic chemicals, including mercury, near farmlands, water sources, and even residential areas. Chemical contamination from gold extraction has rendered some locals incapable of moving, walking, standing up, or even sitting down. This is their story. Sudanese mother Awadia Ahmed has long wondered why her youngest child, Talab, was born blind and unable to walk. Now she suspects the piles of poisonous waste left by gold miners. Ahmed is not the only one of Banat's 8,000 residents to have observed birth defects and miscarriages. When she turned two years old, we found out that she could not sit down. At first, I would lift her up, and when I put her on the bed, she would sit down. A while later, she became heavier, so she could not keep upright anymore. Even though her health appeared excellent, her body was dysfunctional. In recent years, a growing number of traditional miners have flocked to the village, hoping to strike it rich. But they leave behind hazardous white powdered waste laden with toxic chemicals, including mercury, used in the gold extraction process. The waste is dumped near farmland, water sources and residential areas. Currently there is a huge problem facing the residents of these places and that's the presence of large quantities, thousands of tons of waste or mining residues among industrial and agricultural areas. Artisanal gold mining is widespread across much of Sudan, employing over 2 million people producing about 80% of the gold extracted nationwide. Sudan is one of the world's poorest countries and mining remains a source of fast profits, attracting many. The problem with mining is that it's widespread across almost all of Sudan's states. There are more than 2 million artisanal miners and the state unfortunately hasn't been able to manage this sector and could not stop its activity. This is because of gold fever and gold is a precious and expensive metal. It pushed people to try to get the gold by any means. The industry has flourished since oil-rich South Sudan broke away in 2011 during the rule of now-ousted President Omar al-Bashir. A period marked by economic hardship, government mismanagement, corruption and international sanctions. This has a very big impact on the soil and its use in many places, especially in agricultural areas, forests and even in the desert. There is now a lot of destruction, huge physical destruction within the lands. We've got very large deep pits and large quantities of mining waste. Political and economic turmoil in Sudan has piled up pressure on households already struggling to make ends meet. The country's economic crisis worsened after an October military coup led by Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan. The coup triggered cuts to crucial international aid and fed into spiraling prices of basic commodities. Sudan is one of Africa's top gold producers, generating 30.3 tons of gold in the first half of 2021 alone according to official figures, which does not include the artisanal output.